all the way back in 2012, FromSoft made Gundam Unicorn for the PlayStation 3. An amazing game that everyone seems to have forgotten about. Or perhaps more accurately, a game that nobody knew about in the first place. I only vaguely knew about its existence, and truth be told, I didn't really care enough about it to give it a shot back in the day, and the only reason that I did eventually pick it up was because I found the limited edition for under $10, so how could I not buy that? But that doesn't mean that I played it right away. It just went on my shelf for a couple of years, until some random day when I decided, eh, why not? And my first impression of this game was really good. I had just bought a new television and just the menu and the loading screens looked phenomenal. Combine that with foreboding music and you're really setting the mood for a serious Gundam game. The main mode is where you play through the story of the anime and is called the Unicorn Mode. But rather than playing through a linear campaign, it is instead split up in the different main characters and you get to experience the main story from their perspective through a variety of cutscenes and missions. Or at least that's how it looks now that I've unlocked everything, because when you first play through it, you can't just select one character and play through only their story. The missions and cutscenes actually do unlock in a more or less linear way and will sometimes force you to play basically the same mission twice, but just from a different perspective. Now I'm fighting the Sazabi in the Rizal, and now I'm fighting the Sazabi in the Unicorn. Potato, potato. And unfortunately, even with this padding, it still only takes about two to three hours to finish the main mode, depending on your skill level and whether or not you watch the cutscenes. There is some extra DLC, but on the disc, this is it. Oh, and don't expect too much from the cutscenes either. There are two types, somewhat clunky 3D CG using the in-game graphics to recreate scenes from the anime, or just screenshots from the anime with a voiceover, of which there are many. Like, just look at how many golden film reels there are compared to the blue mission icons. Believe me, there is plenty of room left on the disc so they could have easily included actual footage from the anime. So if this was everything the game had to offer, I could completely understand why nobody cares about it today, let alone back then when you had to pay full price for the damn thing. But fortunately we also have the custom cast mode, where you can assemble your own team of pilots and mobile suits, and even a warship, and tackle various preset missions. Basically, it's like an arcade mode, but with a custom team. And I immediately fell in love with the customization, because it's not just upgrading the stats of your mobile suit to make it better, something you see in a lot of games, just so they can say that they have customization you can also give the machine whatever weapon you want. So we immediately have a degree of customization that is well above most other Gundam games out there. The ability to buy more powerful machines is unlocked by clearing more difficult missions, and the credits to buy them are earned by completing both story and custom missions. So clearing the story first gives you the perfect jumping off point for the custom mode. And it really is this custom mode that is going to determine how much mileage you're gonna get out of this game. I fell in love with buying new mobile suits, trying out different formations, and then tackling missions with them. But at the same time, it 
is much of the same, meaning that it all comes down to how much you like the gameplay. And for the most part, FromSoft did a really good job here with a system that is based on that of the Ace games. The basics are simple to learn, but there is a nice layer of depth to them that you will have to learn to tackle the more difficult missions later on. And in addition to that, From Software said that they wanted to give the mobile suits the heft of actual giant robots, and I can feel that. It's hard to describe, but the way they made the mobile suits use their thrusters does feel and also sound heavy without negatively impacting the high-speed gameplay. Where things do go downhill, though, is with the mobile armor controls. You can choose between flight mode for full control or easy mode for simpler control. But whichever one you choose, they both suck. I went with flight mode controls hoping for a more Ace Combat-esque experience, but man was I mistaken. The Y-axis does not get inverted, which is a cardinal sin when you're piloting something that looks like an airplane, and it becomes about as maneuverable as a World War I fighter plane. Simply put, it's a hassle, it's not fun, and I only used it to quickly get from point A to point B. The only interesting thing they did with the mobile armor modes is that there's a system that you can grab onto a mobile suit in mobile armor mode to use it as a subflight system. A novel feature in theory, but not something I ended up using outside of the tutorial. Simply playing as a mobile suit is just way more fun. And since we're on the topic of unfun things, the tutorial. It's about as cookie cutter and boring as you can get. Cardius Vist pops up in the top right, he tells you what to do, you do it, and he tells you you did a good job. If you do what he says, because if you don't feel like playing through the mandatory tutorial, you can skip the first one, but you can literally do nothing and just have Cardius do a spiel while you go build some model kits for 5 minutes. Whether or not you actually listen to him, Cardius just goes on. The only noteworthy thing here that I found kind of funny is that in the beginning he tells us not to worry about anything because this is literally just a game inside of a simulator, as opposed to many other games that will actually try their hardest to convince you that you aren't in a video game. And just when you think you're done with the first tutorial, they hit you with another one. And another one. And another one! And another one! <laughs> now, these aren't mandatory, but they do teach you some of the more advanced maneuvers you can pull off, so following them along might not be a bad idea if you want to tackle the harder missions in the custom mode. The final thing we have to talk about then is how approachable this Japan-only game is to a non-Japanese speaker. And fortunately, it is very approachable. The PlayStation 3 is region free, meaning you can play the game on a European or American console no problem. All of the important menu options are either in English or they do have visual aids next to them. And the missions are very straightforward. Destroy everything or destroy the obviously marked target. There's only one mission where you do have to be careful and that is when you're attacking the Nail Argama as full frontal. Just like in the anime, you're not supposed to destroy the ship, you're just supposed to play around with it. So, in conclusion, I was actually very surprised that this game that almost nobody ever talks about is as good as it is. I would have loved for this thing to get a sequel both to have the full unicorn story playable and to have every mobile suit from the anime playable in custom mode. 
if you're a fan of the unicorn anime or the mobile suits featured in it, at least the first part, you're gonna have an absolute blast with this game. It's not the type of game that I'll play for hours on end, but it's great to boot up once in a while and kick some ass with a Stark Jagan. Just be like me and don't overspend on it. But that has been all for this review of FromSoft's Gundam game. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'm off to play Armored Core 6.